Good afternoon everybody. Today we are going to see the beer fermentation. So by seeing or looking at the barrel of the beer and uh, the glasses of beer you might be very cherished. But uh, uh, I think beer is the beverage which uh, one can consume it uh, because it contains a very low quantity of alcohol that it contains only 4 to 8 percentage of alcohol with respect to uh, wine it contains 10 to 12 percent of alcohol and uh, you know the other beverages like uh, whiskey, rum, gym which contains uh, usually 50 to 51 percent of alcohol. So today we are going to see the beer fermentation. So in beer fermentation we are looking for uh, different uh, contents like uh, what is uh, the definition of beer, history of beer, composition of beer, then beery process, then what are the different types of beers and difference between the alley and the lager. Uh, so this alley and lager is a type of uh, yeast saccharomyces species which we are using for the fermentation process and what are the factors affecting beer quality, top companies which are involved in the beer um, production, uh, worldwide impact of brewing industry and what are the health benefits and uh, what are the harmful effects of beer consumption and uh, lastly the references. So what is beer? Beer it comes from the word beber a Latin word which means to drink. So it is a alcoholic fermentation product and that is the usually it is called as the malted uh, drink. So uh, since it contains uh, malted grains like wheat, barley, so uh, this particular uh, that is the beer is made from the malted grains. Uh, we will see what is the malted grains, how the malt is obtained. Uh, we usually use two types of yeast depending on the type of uh, beer fermentation uh, either using uh, a top yeast which is Saccharomyces cerevisiae or uh, it can be a bottom yeast too. So it uses the uh, yeast as a microorganism Saccharomyces uh, species and uh, different carbohydrate sources are uh, used to create different types of beers and you have many different types of beers. Uh, depending on their flavors, aroma, styles, etc. So we are coming to the history. Uh, we have a long history or uh, back from uh, that is 4000 BC. Uh, in Middle East, the summer people were uh, fermenting a form of bread to make a fermented pulp. Uh, which had an intoxicating effect. So what is intoxicating effect? That is what is called as the intoxicating effect. So the early beer, uh, it was very cloudy, which was usually observed 3000 BC uh, before Christ, before the uh, Christ was born. And this beer was very cloudy, unfiltered, and it was usually drunk through a straw. So see here you can uh, see that Babylonians were uh, uh, having their uh, beer with the help of the straw uh, and it was very bitter. Uh, in uh, 1550 BC the Egyptians were also very keen in breathing and uh, beer and malt have been found buried in the tombs of pharaohs. Uh, it is a place, pharaohs means it is a place where the mummies were kept or where the dead um, uh, dead living beings after uh, means the living being after their death they were uh, uh, preserved or uh, buried in a particular location. So this pharaohs the kings of that uh, Egypt they are called as the pharaohs they when they die they were uh, kept in, in the form of a mummies and uh, uh, alongside of the mummies they were also having um, uh, the huge containers of this uh, breathing or the uh, brews. Okay, uh, so they thought that uh, after dying also they are having the ability to have this kind of uh, facility and they can enjoy even after their death. Uh, in uh, 100 AD, uh, beer was extensively uh, drunk through the Roman Empire. So Romans were also very fond of uh, beer and beer from this time 
they had been consumed fresh and it was uh, served cloudy. So, usually the beer is in the form of a cloudy state only because uh, there is a foam formation and uh, the malt uh, or the uh, 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 that is uh, since it is made up of the hops and the um, uh, cereals you have uh, cloudiness in nature we will see in uh, later slides so in addition the brew uh, could uh, have produced little or no foam at all but uh, during the roman uh, era they uh, their beer did not have the foams at all and uh, they also um, added certain spices like uh, uh, cinnamon or cardamom uh, so that they could improve their uh, taste also. So, uh, again we are looking for the history. So, in middle ages, uh, largest brewers were uh, the monasteries. Uh, you could imagine that uh, the saints and the uh, monks were uh, very, uh, uh, these were the populations which uh, used uh, uh, brews uh, for the consumption. So, from 1000 AD, most beer was uh, bittered. Uh, with wild herbs and uh, then in the uh, uh, 1150 AD uh, they started addition of the hops. So, usually it is a type of a, um, a plant material which is usually uh, found in the Europe and uh, then it is uh, uh, reached the Britain in the middle, th uh, middle of 15th century. So, Reinhardt uh, had got bought. Um, uh, they stipulated a law that beer could only be brewed uh, from uh, water, hops and malt because they, uh, uh, they came with the law. Uh, later on, uh, they started using the hops as an important ingredient and uh, they used the yeast also, but the use of yeast came later. So, this uh, was usually uh, uh, the method or the process which this German purity law uh, put forth in, nine, uh, in 1560. Uh, 16. So, the fresh mash ton act was uh, um, uh, put forth in 1880 and this new law said that the brewer to brew from what he pleases and have the perfect choice of his material and methods. So, this law states that they have to use only the water hops and malt, but later on the act said that no, you can have your choice of uh, material and whichever method you like it to make a perfect choice of your brew or the beer. Then in 1882 and in 1895, uh, Louis Pasteur, he was a French scientist and as you know, he has made his contribution in spoilage of wine. So, he discovered that there were different types of yeast that could be used in different types of fermentations and uh, hence it produces a distinct type of uh, beer giving the uh, beer a perfect uh, uh, aroma and uh, uh, taste. So, today beer occupies first ranking order in terms of mostly consumed alcoholic drink uh, throughout the world. So, we have a beer as one of the most beverage uh, product uh, which helps in uh, making the uh, 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 which helps uh, uh, the beverage industry to uh, acquire uh, fi uh, uh, most financial uh, gains. So, how the beer is made? What are the basic ingredients of the beer? So, uh, what is the composition? Uh, beer is made up of water, malt, hops and yeast. So, you have malt, malt means it is the cereals, uh, you can use wheat, barley, uh, water, then hops and then the yeast. Uh, water makes up 90% uh, of the volume uh, of beer and it is obtained from wells, springs or tap water, uh, whatever it may be. So, usually uh, this uh, water is should be of a high purity if you want a good beer. Uh, its salts and uh, mineral contents uh, should be monitored uh, and it has to be adjusted. Uh, because uh, it is very much important uh, when uh, it uh, when the fermentation beer fermentation is carried about by uh, using a yeast magnesium has to be added it is an important molecule for the um, uh, for the growth and uh, for the fermentation of the beer so if water contains too much sulfur also then the brew becomes bitter so you have to see uh, that uh, the water should contain low uh, content of the sulfur it should contain low sulfur content, okay. The water should contain low sulfur 
content. Uh, then malt, what is malt? Um, uh, sugar coming from the malted grains like barley and wheat, oats, maize and rice. So usually what is malt? Malt means uh, since we are using different types of uh, cereals like wheat, barley, oats, maize and uh, rice, uh, it contains a uh, carbohydrate and this carbohydrate is degraded when they are soaked in water and they are allowed to germinate. So that after germination, there is a enzyme activation. The conversion of starch and proteins into sugars and amino, uh, amino acids. So what happens? Uh, whatever the starch or the carbohydrate is present in rice, wheat, barley or uh, uh, oats and maize, that starch is converted into uh, a maltose sugar. Actually, it is the maltose sugar. And also there is a protein uh, which contains different types of amino acids. So it is now the starch has become a mixture of proteins, then maltose sugar and also the amino acid and that is what is called as the malting. So later on after malting, uh, the grains are dried. Uh, so usually uh, the first step is uh, soaking the grains in water, then allowing it to sprout, ankuriene. And after that, when it is uh, sprouted, usually you will see the large amount of enzyme activation which converts the starch into uh, uh, sugars and amino acids and that is what is called as the malting. And then these sprouted grains, they are heat dried so that you will deactivate the enzymes like amylases. Okay. Uh, then uh, later on the crushing and uh, soaking of the malted grain in hot water is carried out for uh, uh, um, few hours. For example, six hours it is carried out in hot water and uh, then the enzyme produces the uh, maltose sugar and this maltose sugar is boiled with hops and yeast to produce the beer. So uh, now we will see the hops. So uh, hops, what are ho hops? So hops are cone like flowers usually obtained from wine plant. They are obtained from wine plant, uh, hop wine plant. So these are the hop flowers, cone like flowers. And usually they, where they grow, they grow in North America, Europe and Asia. So uh, what does they contain? They actually contain the humulones uh, which are found in the lupulins. See, this, uh, these are the yellow uh, waxy yellow lupulin glands within the uh, leaves of the flowers. Uh, so this particular uh, humulones, this humulones, they are containing the yellow lupulin gland and uh, that uh, humulin is usually found. So what uh, it gives? It gives bitterness to the beer. And also it increases the beer's shelf life, means storage life of the beer is increased. It does not get um, means uh, spoiled uh, if uh, it is preserved for a longer period of time. Uh, then hops contains uh, resins and oils also. So this resins gives uh, bitterness to the beer and the oil enhances the flavor and aroma of the uh, beer. It also enhances the aroma of the beer. Now yeast. Uh, this yeast as you know Saccharomyces cerevisiae you have come across this word uh, several number of times it is used for uh, um, carrying out the alcohol fermentation uh, in which uh, 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 this microorganism or the yeast unicellular uh, eukaryotic yeast is usually employed. So what this yeast does it converts sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. So after addition uh, this malt and water uh, all together they are boiled and cooled and then later on the yeast is added. So there are two types of yeast which are usually used in the beer fermentation. So if you are using a alley yeast which is called as the Saccharomyces cerevisiae then the beer is some uh, different type of beer. And if you are using a lager yeast the, that is Saccharomyces uva, uh, that is uvarum, then uh, usually you will have a different type of beer. So this we call it as a top yeast or a top fermenters yeast because 
uh, when it grows and ferments the beer usually it is found on the top surface uh, of the fermentation uh, media. But lager yeast is a bottom yeast, bottom fermenters yeast because it grows and multiplies and ferments the beer um, uh, and it is found at the bottom of the fermentation media. So this is the difference in between the alley and the lager. So what are the other ingredients which are used in the fermentation media? You can use the unmalted grains, okay. You can use the spices like cardamom, then your cu uh, uh, that is the cinnamon and also many different types of, uh, see here black pepper, ginger or the cloves are used, okay. You can use the other sugar sources also in order to enhance your uh, aroma and also the uh, what you can say the flavors. So you can use honey or you can use different types of uh, materials in order to have different types of sugars also. Uh, you can use the vegetable and fruits also if you want that particular type of uh, um, flavor to that particular uh, beer. So now we are going to see the uh, brewery process or how the fermentation process is uh, fermentation of beer is usually carried out. So first step is malting, so how to make the malt, so you have to remove the grains, you have to, uh, what you have to do, you have to soak the grains for 8 to 10 hours and then you have to uh, make them sprout and after sprouting you have to uh, mash, it, uh, mash it in the meals and then uh, these are the various steps which you have to carry out, that is first step is the malting, then second is the mash, uh, that is milling. Uh, uh, milling means grinding, uh, but it is a coarse particle. Then mashing is done in the hot water and then lottering is done, then boiling, then hope addition, then hope separation and cooling and then fermentation is carried out in presence of uh, yeast and then lagering is done and then bottling and preservation. So these are the different steps which are to be followed during the beer fermentation process. So milling, mashing, lottering, then boiling, then hop removal, okay, then uh, that is the separation and then cooling is done, then um, after cooling the yeast is added and actual fermentation process is going on and then after um, fermentation is done, uh, then downstreaming is done by uh, using uh, the uh, uh, different technique and usually maturing is carried out and then uh, that is the bottling and the packaging and then moving to the market. Okay, so we are looking now the first step that is the malting. So what is malting? Malting means uh, you have to take either the grains or the barley or you can take the oats or anything. You have to soak it in water tanks for 2 to 3 days at uh, 10 to 15 degrees centigrade and that is what is called as the stipping. Then they are allowed to germinate for 6 to 15 days. So for germination it requires a particular humidity and temperature and that has to be kept that is the humidity at the 45 percent and temperature that is 12 to 21 percent. Then enzyme site uh, that is cystase it converts the insoluble starch into the soluble one and then the enzyme diastase are usually formed in during the sprouting stage which converts the soluble starch into the sugars. So this conversion of starch into sugars that is particularly the maltose it is called as the malting. So you know this is your barley, barley is now it is in the process of malting so it is sprouted and then uh, what you have to do uh, when it is sprouted usually. Uh, this particular uh, enzymes are getting activated so that it converts, this cystase is converting insoluble starch to soluble one and then this soluble starch is converted in presence of diastase to the sugars like maltose and this process is called as the malt and then the further process is going for the uh, brewing uh, or making on the beer. The malt is then hot air dried. Now, uh, hot air drying of malt is done which is at, uh, carried out at 55 degrees centigrade in the host houses. This is what is called as the hosting. So if you visit uh, Britain, Great Britain or the European countries, you will find this particular structures and this uh, structure is called as a host house. So if you uh, observe the interior of this uh, host houses, you will see that uh, particular this uh, 
uh, what you say the infrastructure is uh, is uh, so like that so this is what is called as the cowl and this is the wind vane so this is the small oast house and larger types with uh, multiple cones can be seen so hops in pockets hoisted up uh, into this entry so hoist uh, that is the hops are added through this okay uh, so how usually it is carried out uh, so uh, usually the hops are added through this window okay so there is a hop addition entry so here the hop is added so then the hop uh, is pressed then it is uh, cooled down and uh, then you have the sacks of dried and pressed hops uh, um, uh, here and uh, uh, here usually what happens uh, this is what is the drying room uh, host house is nothing but a uh, it's like a uh, house where uh, 55 degree centigrade is usually uh, maintained because it requires the higher temperature to uh, undergo a uh, hosting uh, uh, process so these are the drying process and uh, these are the layers of the hop uh, sacks so this this is the actually the coal which is uh, used for maintaining the uh, temperature inside the host uh, house okay so next step is the milling so uh, milling means uh, after drying and heating in the uh, that is the uh, hosting uh, houses uh, the rootlets are usually removed from the malt now what is this rootlets if you see the sprouted grain after drying it at uh, you know, 55 degrees centigrade uh, the plumule like structure that is the whitish uh, uh, plumule like structure which uh, grows out of that grain that is being removed out that is what is called as the rootlets and these rootlets which are called as the malt curls they are sold as a cattle feed usually they are not thrown away they are used as a cattle feed uh, only the grains are taken after cutting out the rootlets means the sprouted portion that is the plumule part is uh, usually the removed out and only the grains are taken and then they are after drying it properly they are then grinded coarsely in the millers and that is what is called as the milling process so after milling you get a, a coarse powder and uh, this coarse powder is called as the grist that is what is called as the grist when je purna pane barik flour nahi milat when je powder form nahi milat you have to coarsely fine when je jase tumcha daliya asto kiwa tumcha suji rava asto okay uh, so ta pramane thoda sa coarsely to ground kela jato and that is what is called as the grist Uh, later on this grist or the coarsely powdered grain is then mixed with the hot water now this has to be mixed with the hot water it is cooked for 6 hours at low temperature it is cooked for 6 hours at low temperature then what happens during this the enzymes in the malt they convert the starch into sugars and they produce the wort that is what is called as the wort formation w o r t wort means when the starch is getting converted to sugars that is what is called as the wort or the worting process this wort is then boiled for about an hour and half means there is a sathi ha wort punha boil kela jato and the factors like temperature then how much time you are undergoing the boiling and what is the ph uh, uh, during that particular process is leading to a particular type of beer. Beer, beer are types are they depend on that. It depends on the uh, sugars, how they are usually, um, uh, how the process is usually carried out at what different temperatures or the time or the pH being adjusted. Accordingly, you will have the flavor, uh, flavor and aroma to that particular uh, beer. Now the fourth step is lottering. What is this lottering? Lottering means it is the separation of wort. Now uh, when you are boiling, you have the solid also and you have the liquid portion also. So separation of wort, it means that you are only uh, taking out or separating out the sugar solution from the undissolved part of the grain. So usually when you are uh, uh, when you are using the undissolved uh, 
uh, uh, part of the grain then you will have some uh, flogginess uh, fogginess or you, have, uh, you will have the cloudiness to your uh, beer so we don't want it so now since we are using a advanced techniques uh, this particular uh, beer fermentation process it is involving the lottering step and this lottering step is separation of the wort sugar solution from the undissolved part of the grain uh, then water is uh, sparged through the grains so uh, usually you have to press the grain so that uh, the only the uh, undissolved uh, grains will uh, uh, removed out will be removed out in the form of cakes and uh, only the liquid portion is uh, uh, proceeded further for beer fermentation then uh, sparging must be done very gradually this process is done in usually the tanks known as the lotter tun which contains the giant sieves so these are the usually the sieves and uh, this is the sparge through which uh, your uh, um, uh, this uh, wort is uh, uh, introduced inside and uh, this is your false bottom so you have the uh, you know, the spent grain port so uh, the spent grain port will come uh, the spent grains will come through this port and the mash will uh, mash will be uh, entering in and uh, this is the rotor or the raking uh, phenomena and uh, uh, usually what happens uh, uh, the sparge through the sparge the uh, when the wort is being sprinkled on this particular rake arm uh, the uh, liquid portion will be get separated out and uh, the spent grains will be separated out uh, uh, differently. So, uh, here you will have the uh, wort collection, uh, wort collection uh, vessel and uh, e uh, wort is collected means the liquid portion is collected here. So, the spent grains are sold as the feed for the cattle and the mal malt mixture might also be sprayed with the uh, hot water once again. Okay. So, in order to get uh, a maximum amount of uh, wort or the sugar solution, you have to uh, do uh, this kind of uh, uh, that is uh, uh, raking process very, uh, very efficiently. Then uh, the next step is boiling. Now, again the wort is uh, then transferred into the boiling uh, tanks which are called as the uh, kettles and then the hops are added at this stage. So, uh, during the boiling, the hops are added. Uh, boiling sterilizes the wort, it inactivates the enzymes, it uh, coagulates the proteins and uh, 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 which are present and uh, they forms the flavor compounds uh, from uh, added hops. So, why hops are added? Hops are added to improve the aroma and the flavor. Okay. So, uh, and uh, usually uh, when it is done, uh, hops and precipitated proteins they get uh, separated out from the wort after boiling is usually carried out. So, you have to add and you have to remove also and then the resting liquid is cooled in a plate um, heat exchanger to the fermenting temperature then it is again uh, cooled down. So, cooling is usually carried out in the uh, plates uh, plate exchange. So, these are the plate exchange uh, exchangers. So, uh, the cooling uh, or the cooled air uh, or the coolant uh, uh, like how uh, the coolant is flowing in your fridge in the similar type of uh, um, cooling agent is flowing in opposite direction to the wort and it is killing the and it is cooling, it is cooling the wort. So, proteins and hops are then removed from the wort and then the wort is uh, oxygenated during the cooling and then the wort is then uh, going to the hot water ta uh, wort tank and then it is cooled in a plate cooler where the coolant flows in the opposite direction to the wort and then after cooling the wort's temperature do drops down from boiling to the uh, to about that is 10 to 20 degree centigrade in a few seconds. So, it is a uh, plate cooler where the wort is cooled down. So, you have to in this sixth step you have to separate out the hops and you have to cool the wort. After cooling it, then you have to basically carry out the fermentation process. So, fermentation is uh, carried out by the yeast. Now, the coolant, cooled oxygenated wort is placed in a fermentation vessel and yeast are added. So, you can add uh, top uh, fermenters yeast that is Saccharomyces cerevisiae 
or you can add the bottom fermenters is like uh, 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 other species of saccharomyces. Uh, okay, so we will uh, speak it later on how the two types of ferm beer fermentation is carried out. So, vessel used is uh, either it can be a square open or it can be a conical, uh, but conical is mostly used and the fermentation it lasts for about uh, 7 to 10 days or more and what is the function of fermentation, uh, fermenter? Fermenter contains a maximum amount of wort that is what is mixture of sugar solution okay and uh, usually uh, this uh, uh, it allows the evacuation and uh, collection of the carbon dioxide and also it has a proper cooling system and it also has the fermentation al is already well equipped with the temperature and uh, uh, pH and pressure uh, inside the vessel is well monitored. So, now we will see what is the metabolism which is uh, usually taking place when the fermentation is carried out. So, uh, this Saccharomyces cerevisiae if you are using a uh, yeast, uh, top brewer's yeast, then it converts this uh, uh, usually uh, the uh, glucose is converted to 2 ADP and then 2 ATP are formed, then pyruvate is done, then uh, is usually uh, made and then this 2 pyruvate is converted to uh, 2 acetaldehyde in presence of uh, uh, that is acetaldehyde decarboxylase enzyme and carbon dioxide is given out and then this 2 acetaldehyde is converted to 2 ethanol and this process from conversion of 2 acetaldehyde to 2 ethanol is called as the alcohol fermentation which is carried out in the yeast process. So, this already we have seen in the second year uh, in the metabolism physiology and metabolism paper ok. Then the fermentation tank usually as I have spoken uh, you have two different tanks uh, square open and the conical one. So, this is the structure or uh, uh, structural details of the open square tank. Uh, so, older types of vessels usually which were made of different slabs. So, this is the outer structure and this is the inner part which is showing. So, uh, modern uh, one stainless steel is uh, being used, it supports the top fermentation, internal cooling pipes are there. So, these are the cooling pipes uh, which are present, uh, liquid pump from the bottom to top mixing of wort uh, with yeast and uh, uh, proper aeration is carried out. Uh, so, accumulated liquid flow through the uh, organ pipes uh, to the bottom. So, through the uh, uh, that is from the top to the bottom it is flowing and is easily removed from the tray at the end. So, it you can you uh, uh, you can easily remove your uh, yeast uh, from the after the fermentation process is completed. And this is the most uh, uh, widely used uh, fermenter tank which is a conical in shape. So, large stainless vessels which is uh, of industrial use, yeast and wort pumped uh, through bottom of the vessel. So, usually it is pumped from the bottom of the vessel and here you are uh, filling the tank from the bottom to the upper end. Mostly it supports the bottom fermentations and uh, vessel is equipped with the cooling jacket. You have the cooling jacket which is arranged. Uh, uh, on the uh, exterior part and uh, it keeps your uh, uh, temperature uh, at what desired temperature it requires or where the desired uh, fermentation process is required. Then um, cylindrical uh, no, conical vessels they are uh, usually used to uh, introduce uh, a particular uh, uh, oxygen also. So, oxygen uh, means aeration is done properly. So, uh, Yeast is collected at the bottom in the coal. See here, after the fermentation is done, the yeast get collected here and it can be cleaned it uh, pro properly or it is very easy to clean it out. Okay. So, this is how the usually the fermentation is uh, carried out. So, if you see, uh, usually from bottom, uh, you are uh, allowing the fermenta uh, fermentation medium means it is the wort mixture that is the sugar solution to enter. These are the cooling jackets and uh, the yeast cooling jacket is present here. Then after uh, that, after the alcohol is, uh, alcohol means the beer is produced, uh, then usually you can uh, take it out from the uh, bottom only and uh, you can remove the yeast also, you can remove the uh, CIP uh, fluids also and you can remove the beer also and it is easy to clean also. 
uh, then uh, the fermentation usually the fermentation process uh, uh, depends on the yeast being used so since we are using two types of yeast so, uh, uh, that is the um, uh, bottom yeast and the top yeast uh, you have to uh, maintain the temperatures of the fermentation also then also you have to add the anti foam agents because foam production is very high and at the end of the fermentation yeast is removed and saved for reuse in the next batch so you can use the reuse uh, you can use the yeast for the next uh, fermentation process so four main factors which are affecting the rate and quality of the beer fermentations are fermentation temperature so temperature it has to be kept constant uh, for that particular type of beer fermentation as well as the volume of yeast which you add at the start of the fermentation that is we call it as the inoculum uh, addition so it has to be properly added because if you add uh, less then the beer fermentation will not occur properly and if you even add more then it will result in some bitterness or something like that and you will not get a proper aroma and flavor to the beer then volume of oxygen is also very much important because you have to have the wort well oxygen uh, in the well uh, oxygenated state uh, during the fermentation process and also you have to see the levels of nutrients in the wort okay so these are very important uh, factors which has to be kept in mind when you undergo the fermentation uh, process uh, of uh, uh, for beer production so what are the four stages of beer fermentation the first stage is the lag stage as we already know that uh, the bacterial uh, phase of growth it uh, follows the uh, lag phase log phase stationary and death phase similarly saccharomyces cerevisiae is also uh, having this four phases so the yeast is pitch, uh, uh, yeast is also having the four phases of growth uh, it takes a uh, half to two days depending on the yeast pitching rate it means it refers to the amount of yeast that is being added to cooled wort means uh, if the low amount of uh, yeast is added then it will require uh, more than uh, two days but if the right volume of inoculum that is the yeast is added then it can be completed the lag phase will be completed within uh, half to one hour uh, one day half to one day may complete ho jata hai then yeast viability it refers to the percentage of viable cells in the population so lag phase depends on the yeast uh, viability also if you see that uh, yeast is not in a proper uh, viable condition means if it is not in the live state if some of few of the uh, yeast cells has already died out or they are in the uh, death phase then it's a, uh, then usually it requires a longer lag phase then the yeast vitality it refers to the activity or metabolism of the cell so how active is the yeast if it is actively is then it can resume the log phase uh, within two days means after two days uh, so uh, it has to be in the vital form then what temperature has to be maintained because it requires a proper temperature that is 15 degree centigrade if we are using a saccharomyces cerevisiae and wort aeration rate is also to be maintained because it requires a proper aeration also and it requires a adaptation type so for any microorganism to undergo a metabolism it requires time so uh, to adapt to make their uh, messenger rna to make their uh, enzymes required for undergoing the metabolic process so it requires a particular adaptation time also uh, then the log phase which is called as the accelerating stage is cells and uh, beer temperature increases up to the maximum so beer is cooled to keep the temperature constant at all the times so this uh, 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 factor has to be considered at utmost uh, uh, care and the foam is seen on the surface of the beer because uh, uh, the proteinaceous material is now uh, uh, making the foam and or uh, it is resulting in the foam formation and therefore uh, it is usually observed on the surface of the beer and stationary phase here the uh, beer gravity will drop and usually the foam becomes dark when uh, the yeast is in the stationary phase then the beer it has started uh, uh, some process or it has started the process of beer fermentation and uh, in the declining phase the beer fermentation rate and fermentable sugar in the beer decreases and the beer temperature is cooled down so these are the various uh, stages where the yeast is um, considered uh, in the beer fermentation process now this is the summary of the process uh, which usually occur during the beer fermentation so what yeast is doing yeast is utilizing the oxygen it is producing sterol 
and it is uh, this sterol is pro uh, promoting its growth. The pH is reduced and ethanol is produced and uh, carbon dioxide is formed because of the pyruvate decarboxylase enzyme uh, which is converting the pyruvate to uh, acetaldehyde. When most of the wort sugars are used, uh, fermentation rate usually decrease. So, when the sugar wort sugar is uh, used up or consumed up and there is no sugar left for fermentation, then you usually the fermentation rate uh, is decreased. An increase in alcohol level causes flo flocculation and settling of the yeast. So, when the alcohol production or when the beer is uh, produced, beer means it is the alcohol. So, when alcohol is produced, usually it results in the flocculation and settling of the yeast and beer is removed and sub subjected for the further treatment. Then later on the beer is removed and then it is subjected for the further treatment. Now we will see the types of beer fermentation. So, you have the top fermentation and you have the bottom fermentation. So, depending on what type of uh, yeast you are using. So, if you are using a alley or top fermenting yeast like Saccharomyces, then it, you call it as the top fermentation. And bottom fermentation means you are using a lager or the bottom fermenting yeast that is the uvarum. You are using the uvarum species of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So, uh, here you require a temperature of uh, 65 to 75 Fahrenheit, but uh, the bottom fermentations require a cooler temperatures like 45 to 55 degree Fahrenheit. Then yeast and foam found at the top of the medium because yeast usually since it is a top fermenters yeast, you will see that the you know, on the uh, wort solution uh, there will be a froth and the, froth and the yeast. Uh, because of this only it is called as the top fermentation. But in the laggers, you will see that the yeast is at the down of this wort solution, means wort is the sugar solution. Okay, so, yeast is here present. So, settled yeast is decanted from the unconditioned beer. Uh, second crop that is produced by the end of the fermenter is har uh, harvested since the yeast is pure. So, since it is on the top, it is in the purest form and you can uh, scape um, that is scrap it out and you can use it for the next uh, fermentation process. Uh, but by the top fermentation process, the, be the beer which are uh, being produced, what are the different types of beer produced? That is what is called as the alley beer or the porter beer or the stout beer. But uh, by bottom fermentations, you have produced a type of beer which is called as the lager or the pilsner. So, these are uh, different types of beers which are produced by using, employing different types of um, uh, yeast. Now, other beer fermentation types are also there because uh, when you are using a uh, yeast, if it is not a Saccharomyces cerevisiae or the Saccharomyces uvarum, uh, sometimes the yeast from the air is also getting in like Britannomyces bruxello. Uh, Selensis or the Brettanomyces lambicus, uh, then there is a production of lactic acid or acetic acid also along with the beer and these gives a sour taste to the beer. So, such type of uh, beers which are produced by uh, addition of this particular yeast from the airs, uh, air, uh, the beer produced are lambic beer or the Gwes or the Kirk or the Faro. These are the types of the beers which are usually uh, produced by Britannomyces brucellensis and uh, mixed in mixed fermentations uh, yeast similar to top fermentation is used. Uh, here you have the bacteria also uh, in the mixture and this combination of uh, spontaneous top ferment uh, combination of spontaneous and top fermentation is carried out by Saccharomyces cerevisiae and certain bacteria. And there the conversion of organic acid and higher alcohols to esters are usually done. And because of the easters, you have a particular sweet test uh, in the beer. So, aging of some beers is used to develop a fruit, uh, fruity flavor and it is because of the uh, bacteria, it is because of the bacteria. So, fermentations usually in the beer production, it can be a batch fermentation, it can be a fed batch fermentation, it can be a continuous also. So, depending which type of uh, fermentation you are carrying out uh, as already we have seen what is batch fermentation, what is uh, uh, fed batch fermentation and what is uh, continuous fermentation in detail. So, I am not going in detail. Uh, so, the process is the same for fed batch means what is that um, or the batch fermentation in means what is that. 
Uh, so, I am not going to explain it in detail. So, this is your continuous. Now, we will see the advantage and disadvantage. So, there is a rapid conversion of warp to beer when you are uh, carrying out a continuous fermentation system. Because uh, this continuous fermentation system uh, in beer production leads to rapid conversion of warp to beer and there is a higher efficiency and high ethanol yield is observed when you are continuing uh, using continuous fermentation system and it is more economical also if it is a continuous one because uh, you will not lose uh, time and uh, money and uh, uh, labor uh, investing in uh, uh, trying for the uh, batch fermentations or next batch of uh, fermentation like that. But what is the disadvantage? There might be a microbial uh, contamination because uh, when continuous process is going on, there can be a, a resultant of a contamin microbial contamination which can uh, bring about the huge economic losses. Also the costly vessels they are used because uh, fermentation has to be continued for several uh, rounds of uh, uh, productions or continuous production. So you have to use a costly vessels and may not be suitable for all beer qualities because when you are using a continuous fermentation uh, system, uh, the quality of beer cannot be uh, up to the mark. Okay. So, uh, you have to compromise with the flavor and aroma of that particular beer. Now, next step is lagering. Now, what is this lagering? Lagering means storing and you can call it as lagering also, storing and conditioning stage of beer. Uh, you know how the aging of wine is done, it is kept for several years and uh, when the, uh, uh, some can say, if you watch on YouTube videos, they can say, oh, this is a port wine which is aged for 100 years, means it was kept for 100 years after its production, means it is stored for so many years, 100 years of storage and so now this wine has got a particular aroma and flavor. Do you know that uh, uh, beverage industry is so huge and uh, it has got a very particular uh, uh, not only the intoxicating effect but if you uh, um, taste it, it is said that near about you can have 300 more than more than 300 types of taste on your tongue tip. I just can't imagine I have gone through the YouTube, one of the YouTube, uh, I think so it's not a YouTube, I have gone through the research article one day and uh, that research has cited all the 300 type of uh, uh, taste uh, which even I cannot remember, okay. Uh, coming back, so lagering is uh, storing and conditioning stage of beer. So, beer is kept at about uh, 0 degree centigrade in stainless steel tanks after the fermentation has occurred and the beer is stabilized here and it is allowed to mature for a desired period of time so that you will have a desired flavor and then it is later on pasteurized or filtered once or twice before it is bottled and this process is taking 1 to 3 weeks or even it can take months depending on which type of beer you want it. Okay. Uh, and then bottling and preservation. So, packaging is done in bottles, cans or barrels as you can see here the bottles are being packed here and uh, then container is kept in uh, free of oxygen. The beer is then pasteurized. This kills all the remaining yeast and beer can also be preserved using a special micro filters also. Uh, so, when bottling is done the beer is subjected to carbonization process. Now, what is this carbonization process? Yeah. Means, uh, uh, do you know the champagne bottle? Yeah, when somebody opens it, uh, uh, what you say, the beverage comes out with a force and it uh, um, springs up like a fountain. Okay, you got it clear? So, it is because of the carbonization step, means it, there is addition of carbon dioxide and uh, under reduced pressure. And when the bottle is opened because of the pressure uh, and since carbon dioxide is released out, uh, you will have uh, like uh, that of the foundation uh, fountain, the sprinkling of that particular beverage in the form of a fountain. So, what are the different types of beers? Beers are classified according to the type of uh, yeast used in the fermentation process that is the alley or the lager. So, here you have the beer, 
it can be alley or the lager in alley you have many different types that is pale alley mild alley stout and in lager you have light lager and the dark lager uh, now what are the differences between the alley and the lager beers so already I have explained you uh, it depends on the type of the yeast depending on the temperature depending on the cycle that is it takes seven days then cooled how it is served what is the storage type uh, what are what is the color what is the taste what is the alcohol content everything is depends uh, for uh, defining a particular type of uh, beers so this here you can go through it I am not uh, uh, reading all those things because uh, you can go through it okay and then what are the factors which are affecting the beer quality uh, activity of the beer cell during the fermentation uh, it influences the character of the beer so what are the factors that is first one is the non fermentable components which is usually occurring in the medium that is uh, if the starch is not degraded into a proper uh, uh, soluble starch and then the um, uh, proper enzymes are not used for conversion into uh, uh, simple sugars then you will see that uh, because of non fermentable components also it will affect the quality of beer then fermentable sugars it has to be converted properly inner yeast cell released components because sometimes what happens when the yeast cells are uh, contributing to the metabolism the yeast becomes uh, 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 yeast becomes uh, died out and the, they can release the inner uh, cellular components also uh, so because of this the quality of beer is uh, declining surface active components uh, they are absorbed on uh, into the yeast cell wall so this also brings about uh, the bad quality of beer and contamination contamination by different types of uh, air microflora can bring about uh, the effects in the air quality uh, uh, in beer quality okay so what are the top 10 companies involved in beer production can you imagine china is at the top because it is having more com uh, beer companies uh, in britain uh, in britain or in europe uh, not only Britain, in European countries uh, they mostly go for the wine production not for the beers. Uh, but I think there is a uh, scope uh, for Indians also, uh, we are also in the market uh, but uh, the share of uh, our uh, production is very very low, we are good in uh, wine productions. Okay. Um, this is the worldwide impact of brewing industry so there is no need okay and what are the benefits and side downs or the downsides this is very important see uh, as you know in our ayurved we we have all types of plant decoctions or the plant extractions and uh, they are having alcohol as a base you know it if you smell any of the ayurvedic medicine even if you take a cough syrup you know that it is containing the alcohol okay so this uh, uh, i mean to say that when the beverage is taken in low quantity it is a boon it is a boon if you take alcohol in just a limited quantity it is having a benefits but if you have become uh, alcoholic or if you are taking it too much then it will have naturally the disadvantages okay so what are the benefits and what are the disadvantages so benefits of having beer uh, beer or uh, beer consumption it provides vitamins minerals and flavonoids it lowers the risk of coronary heart diseases yes you do, you will not have a uh, heart attack it helps reduce produce the good cholesterol so your uh, bad cholesterol will go away it reduces the risk of kidney stones reduces sensitivity to insulin means uh, you will not have a problem of diabetes also but when if you consume the beer in very low amount then strengthens the immune system no significant relationship with the weight gain and beer consumption you don't uh, feel like yeah if you are uh, taking uh, the beer you will uh, have a weight gain particularly the females what are the disadvantages impairment of driving related skills so when you are taking any if you are driving then your skill of driving will be uh, surely lead to the accidents 
and then damage to the organs. If you are taking it too much, then the organs are damaged, it, risks, uh, it increases the risk of uh, cancer. Then you have the depressions, that is what is called as the withdrawal symptoms. You have the heartburns because of acidity, high blood pressure will be done and intoxication and dehydration. These are the you know, disadvantages. Yes, these are the references and cheers my dear students. Here we will end.